Hello there, strategy fans. Twiglets2 here with a Rise of Nations guide on what you should be doing in the first two minutes of any game. We'll not only be looking at what to do and when to do it, but also how to do it as efficiently as possible using all of the tools at our disposal, such as hotkeys, to give you the edge in any matchup. I'll take you through it step by step with on screen examples and a breakdown of why we're doing it. Before we dive right in, here's a quick, not so subtle request for you to subscribe. On this channel, we fight for strategy games. They may not be fashionable anymore, and they may not be sexy, but we love them, especially Rise of Nations. We regularly publish detailed guides, new game reviews, and generally bugger about. If that sounds appealing, please consider subscribing and ting the notification bell. But with that out the way, let's crack on. If you've ever played an RTS before, you'll know the first few minutes of any match are by far the most important. Establishing your economy and getting your first troops on the field as quickly as possible. And most importantly, doing all of this faster than the enemy. If you're a more experienced player, you'll also know that most RTSs have a standard build order at the beginning of each matchup. Sure, there's room for a variety of strategies, but often the very beginning is the same each time, with different strategies developing after that, and Rise of Nations is no exception. Let's look at an example, starting with a small town. Please note that this isn't the Nomad game mode, though pretty much all of what follows could apply in a Nomad game once you've built yourself a small town. The first thing you need to do is type the following. L, T, E, C, hold shift, V, then F, and end with the hash key. You only need to hold shift for the V, by the way. You can do all of that in about a second. Let's break down what this actually does, because you've just achieved a lot in the second it takes you to type that out, before you've even touched your mouse. There are examples running along in the background, but don't worry too much about keeping up with them yet. We'll do a detailed playthrough at the end of the video. Here's what we've achieved so far. L selects your library, T will research science, and E will research civic. There are several advantages to researching science. It increases the line of sight for your scouts, cities and lookouts, making it easier to find the rare resources and ruins at the beginning of the game. It doubles the bonus received from those ruins from 25 to 50. And it also reduces the research time and cost of all other technologies. Researching Civic is also vital, so we can put down our second city by about the one minute mark. After that, C will select your city, then holding shift and tapping V will start creating up to five workers. You won't have enough food to create five workers, but it'll queue up as many as it can based on how much food you have and save you tapping V a bunch of times. Hitting F after this will allocate all of your new workers to your farms, which is really important when we come to the next step, scouting. By pressing the hash key, you will have selected your scout. It's time to move your hands to your mouse so we can get scouting. Before diving too deeply into the scouting part, I have two separate guides that will go into more detail. A card will appear at the top of your screen and I'll link them in the description below. If you start getting overwhelmed by the scouting part of this video, check those two out, then head back here to see how it all comes together. Once you've selected your scout, you need to assign a path for him to scout. Hopefully he'll find plenty of rare resources and ruins for you. My personal preference is to send the scout to the nearest corner, as the corners are a pretty good place to find ruins. Then I send him to a more central part of the map. You also want to select your three workers that are currently allocated to farms, and send them scouting too. Don't worry. Because we hit F earlier, they'll automatically be replaced by workers you have been created. So you don't have to worry about underutilizing your farms. Workers on farms can be tricky to select. I don't know what it is, but sometimes you're trying to select them and the game just says, nope, try again. Instead of trying to select them individually, I suggest either selecting all three at the same time, or you can tap Alt and full stop to select them too. Just make sure you don't send your woodcutters out scouting, as I believe they're best kept on your woodcutter camps. Send them out scouting in different directions on the hunt for rare resources and ruins. I tend to send one of them to the second nearest corner, 
Once they're on their way, it's time to use the Watchtower to hunt for rare resources and ruins in your own territory. I won't go into too much detail here. I've got a separate video that takes a deep dive into this subject, so check out the card in the top right of your screen for more details. Once you have a worker selected, tap Y, then A to preview the lookout, and go hunt for those ruins. This might actually take you quite some time, but it's worth taking your time to ensure you don't miss anything. Hopefully by this point, your workers and scout are starting to pick up ruins, so don't forget to keep checking back to your city to create more workers. The ruins will provide you plus 50 resource of either wood, food or wealth, depending on which of these you have the least of. If you keep creating workers, you'll always have very little food, so the bonus is most likely to be food, so you can keep churning out even more workers. This is much faster than relying on farms to create your first workers. However, don't go too crazy creating all of these workers. Pretty soon, you'll need this food for other things too. You'll find a balance that works for you over time. The next step is to create your second city. If you can do this at about the one minute mark, that's a pretty good point to aim for. The position of this city will depend on a few factors, but generally you'll see players creating it towards their opponent, and ideally near a new source of wood and metal. A quick way of doing this is to hit Alt, full stop to select your citizen, then B for buildings and C for city. This will select a worker, then select a city. Get building. While doing all of this, it can be really challenging to keep track of your scouts, but I've got a couple of tips to help you out there. Firstly, you'll hear a weird buzzing sound when your scout has stopped moving. When this happens, simply hit the cache key to go straight to your scout and set him on a new path to uncover the fog of war. The key to managing your workers that are scouting is to always keep an eye on the inactive worker tab at the bottom of your screen next to the minimap. All of your workers at your city should be busy, so if the inactive worker tab lights up, it'll be because one of your scouts has stopped moving and needs a new path. To go straight to them, hit full stop, then select a new path to send them on their way. Get into the habit of checking this tab. After a while, you'll get into a rhythm. If you've stuck with me this far, congratulations, we're nearly there. Next, you'll want to research Commerce 1, and once ready, build a market and a caravan ASAP to get your wealth income up and running. You can do that by selecting a worker and tapping B followed by M to build the market. Once built, tap N to select the market, then V for a caravan. Last but not least, tap B to start churning out your merchants and send them to all the rare resources your scouts have found. And that's everything. Of course, there is more to do. You're only just getting started. But from this point on is where various different strategies start to unfold. Let's follow along a live example to recap everything we've just gone through in real time. Okay, we're just loading up here and you can see in the top right we've got science and civic underway. We've gone to the city, we've already got our next citizens going, we've sent our scout out. We've got the three citizens, three workers going just about to start scouting. And you can already see two of them have been replaced on the farms with a third ready to go. So we're not really losing out in terms of food income from the farms. Now we're straight onto our lookout tower, looking for those ruins and rare resources within our own territory. You can see there that the civic research expands the borders slightly, so, you know, that's all working quite nicely. And we can hear that our first bit of ruin income coming in. Now, it is important to take your time with the lookout. It feels like it takes ages, considering within the first second or two you do a whole bunch of things and then you spend ages looking with this uh, lookout tower, but trust me, it's worth it. There you go, we just found one, found something. Just sending a worker there and after they've got that yep some ruins i've set up another path for them to do and we're getting our second city down now we're uh, yeah just over a minute that's not bad and you can see at the top commerce research is nearly done as well so we can start getting that market down soon now we're keeping an eye on the mini map here really important at the beginning just having a quick look at the rares we've already found so i have an idea where to send my merchants next and just trying to get in there just as the workers have finished their path. So that's not too bad. Okay, should be getting this market up soon. There we go, got that down there. This is where it really does become a juggle. We're still we're trying to build, we're trying to research, we're trying to scout. Look at that tab there. Yep, I've just seen it where it tells you that your workers have stopped moving. 
and really get used to the little white dot that you get on the minimap when a rare resource has been uncovered. A scout will automatically divert its path to pick up a, ru um, a ruin once it goes past it, so you don't really need to worry about them. But a citizen will go straight past a ruin. Even if they've got right past it, they won't divert their path. So you really need to babysit them when we're doing this. Got our caravan up and running, that's brilliant. And now we're going for merchants. Going for, I think it was cotton, I think we've got some salt there as well. Brilliant. Now the uh, the scout did stop, so yeah, probably not my best scouting. You can see here we're getting a little bit clumped up in in one corner. It's not too bad. And we're yeah we're coming up to the three minute mark now, so we got the merchants deploying. Really really important. That's really going to help us out. We're keeping on top of the workers that are going idle. Found some silver there as well. The rares are pretty good. Getting a merchant on that as well. So I think we got three merchants out and about now. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame how much we're bunched in this kind of top corner, but that's fine. We can recover from that. I, I've done better scouting in the past, but I'll be honest with you guys. I've done a heck of a lot worse as well. Quite often. And there we go. We're aging up there. You know, I could have gone for military one. I could have done a whole bunch of stuff in this particular example. I aged up at that point. And, you know, aging up at the just before three and a half minute mark. Not too bad at all. And that was the live example. As a final tip, here is a challenge that will help make all of this second nature. So you don't even need to think about it in the future. Load up a small map against the AI. It doesn't matter what level they are, it's just for practice. I want you to challenge yourself to do the above as quickly as possible. In particular, I want you to give yourself three minutes to see how far you can get before resigning the game and looking at the resources tab to see how many ruins you collected. If you're collecting about 500, that's a pretty decent amount of ruins for three minutes. Before you know it, you'll be doing all of the above and more within the three minutes and collecting a bunch of ruins to really boost your early game. Of course, you will have noticed at the beginning of this video, I said this would be the first two minutes of the game. And you'll see from my videos, I've been doing this in about three. The thing is, there are way better players out there than me, so don't use me as your benchmark. There will be players that can do all of this in two minutes, and if you want to get better at this game, you may as well aim to be up there with the best. If you found this useful, please let me know in the comments below. It's been awesome chatting to fellow Rise of Nations fans in the comments, so please don't be shy and let me know if there's anything you want me to cover in the future. Until then, please consider subscribing to support the channel, as it's amazing to see how many people are still supporting this game. I've been Twiglets2. Long live Rise of Nations. See ya.